welcome to prompt number 44. Here's to hoping that I can redeem myself from last time. Let's see what we've got. Oh my goodness, we have lawn chair, trampoline, pots and pans. The first two go together, and then we've got this oddball. Let's see what I can come up with. Wow, what a difference a day makes when you have a cold. My voice was just recorded yesterday in that clip and I sound so much better. Anyways, let's just talk about this art, shall we? So I was a little scared with the difference of the lawn chair and trampoline and then the pots and pans. So my first idea was someone coming out of their house and seeing the destruction of a tornado. I thought the only way to have these items in the same image would be because of the destruction of a tornado that had tossed these items around and ended up in a yard. But then I started to think of different ideas and the main thing I kind of want to focus on during December is making these prompt illustrations based on the holidays or just winter in general. So right away, my first thought was, well, I can make a gingerbread house and have a trampoline and lawn chairs on it and have pots and pans because of the baking on the side. The third idea was just to come up with something different, some kids jumping on the trampoline with a lawn chair on the side with pots and pans on their head. Obviously I had to settle with the gingerbread idea because like I said, I do want to kind of make these holiday themed during December because I'm not really doing a whole lot themed because of the holidays. I am going to be doing the weekly ornaments, but I'm not doing anything themed for my illustrations, so why not try to make all of these videos somewhat in the spirit of the holidays? So I was quite sold on the gingerbread house because I, as usual, I don't think it's something that I've ever drawn before. And something that you don't see a lot with gingerbread creations is you don't see stuff like lawn chairs and trampolines. I even Googled gingerbread lawn chair and trampoline. And while I did see a couple of ideas, like using a wafer for the lawn chair, but I don't recall seeing anything for a gingerbread trampoline, which is kind of fun because I don't know about where you're from, but from where I'm from, it's really common for people to have a trampoline in their backyard. And I thought, well, if you're going to make a gingerbread house, why not make it more, I guess, representing of your own home. So although I don't have a trampoline and I've never had a trampoline growing up, I did have lawn chairs and, <laughs> I thought it was fun to draw these lawn chair gingerbread creations in two different positions, the up position and the down position. Now I know this is more of a lawn lounging chair sort of thing, but it's still a chair, I suppose. There aren't armrests, but it still counts as a chair. Basically what I did to construct my lawn chairs was I had four pieces of Twizzlers, or I suppose licorice, as the feet for the chair. And then I have a piece of gingerbread or biscuit or something laid on flat and the back pieces would be, uh, I guess, glued together with icing. To represent those stringy bits of the chair, I just put icing going across. With gingerbread, I think you just have to have simple designs. When you work with food, it's hard to get those details. So honestly, it kind of works for my style, huh? For the trampoline, I just have a circle piece of gingerbread with three or four square pieces of gingerbread as the feet or support for the trampoline. As far as the details go, I just put little lines of icing to represent the coils that hold the trampoline together, or at least hold the bouncy bit to the frame, and that's my gingerbread trampoline. It's really simple, but as I said, when it comes to gingerbread design, I feel like you have to keep things really simple because you are working with food. You do have to worry about things holding together. You can't have thin pieces. Though thinking back on it, I probably could have used the licorice on the poles of the trampoline as well. Whoops. Well, I was about to start describing the house and then I started thinking about my decision to make everything stick to the laws of gingerbread house making and make everything simple and work as if it were actually gingerbread. When reality, this is an illustration and I could have made it as crazy as I wanted to, but for some reason I was so focused on it being realistic and doable in the real world that I didn't even think about the fact that I could do whatever the heck I wanted. Now I'm just sitting here trying to decide if I'm stupid because I didn't use my imagination or if I'm smart because I constrained myself by sticking into the laws of physics and gingerbread making. You decide in the comments, should I have gone all out and made something crazy or is this cute? I like the outcome so I'm not upset that I didn't push myself to make something crazy out of gingerbread, but thinking back on it, 
I could have done something crazier, huh? But that's my artist way, huh? Doing things simple and not pushing myself. Okay, let's get back to talking about the art. No negativity here. Before I forget, I did want to talk about the line art and I completely forgot to talk about it while I was lining it. Something I did want to mention is that when I did the line art for this piece, I did it entirely with a broken line art. That's not something I normally do for my finished pieces. Usually I leave that for my sketches, but because food is so textured, I thought it would be really interesting to have the broken line throughout this illustration. So that's why I did that. And I'm quite happy with how that look turned out. So when I designed the house, I didn't have anything in particular in mind. I just kind of wanted to design a basic gingerbread house. Again, following the rules of actual gingerbread making and what you can actually do in the real world. But I haven't talked about those pots and pans yet. Because this is a gingerbread making situation, I wanted to make sure that the pots and pans were in the background to represent that this was just being made in a house or something. And that is how I was able to tie in the lawn chair and trampoline with the pots and pans. But because I wanted the focus of this illustration to be of the gingerbread house, I didn't want to get too complicated on a background. I did think about having a little kid in the background with their hands on the counter looking at it with the face really close. But again, it was just something that an extra detail would just distract from the gingerbread house. And in the end, when you see later, I just did a simple gray wash in the background and I thought that was good enough to not leave the background white, but also not do anything that was distracting. And I also did something similar to the countertop that the gingerbread is sitting on. I colored it a simple muted brown, and then I left the area around the gingerbread to a faded white as if it were sitting on a bed of snow slash powdered sugar. I think it's pretty cute and it helps highlight the bottom of the house down there, and it really does help separate it from the counter. I don't think the background is a cop out. I really do enjoy the gingerbread house and everything about it. Though there is this weirdly undetailed situation happening with the background, but I think it's fine the way it is. And I'm actually pretty happy with the way this prompt turned out, especially compared to last week. All right, guys, let me know in the comments. Are you going to be making a gingerbread house this holiday? It's not something I normally do, but Dave and I might have something up our sleeves for a video. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.